Hi, welcome to Mini Chef's How to Sculpt videos with myself, Elizabeth. Today we're going to make pumpkins. This is a revamp of my video that I made three years ago, but I've learned how to edit videos a little bit and I've gotten a lot of techniques that I've been able to teach people over the years. And so I'm going to include all those in this video, including things like how to make warts, speckles, and lines and special things, leaves on your pumpkin. Let's get to it. You'll need some clay for your pumpkin color, for leaves if you'd like to make those, and for a stem. You'll also need a silicone dowel tool and a potter's needle. If you don't have these, you can use a toothpick and a pen tip. Don't forget a work mat to protect your tabletop. Begin by taking your pumpkin color and warm it up between your fingers. We warm up our clay so it doesn't crack in the oven because it's really sad when you spend a lot of time working on a piece and it just cracks in the oven. Once your clay is warmed up, take it and roll it into a ball between your palms. You have this kind of a divot in your palm and try to keep the clay within those divots and roll with even pressure because if you start to roll up and down or side to side, you'll create more of an oval shape, which is great if you want to do a gourd or a tall pumpkin, that would be fun. But if you want a circular pumpkin, roll it evenly between your palms or between your fingers if it's a smaller pumpkin or on your work surface. Once you have the shape that you'd like, press it ever so slightly between your fingers so that it just has a little bit of a base and a top to it. Once you have that, smooth it off and see if it will rest on a surface. If it starts to roll away, just kind of tap it a little bit and make sure that it has a good firm base. All right, once you have that, take your silicone dowel tool or your pen tip and press into the center of what you want the top of your pumpkin to be. And then kind of roll it around to make a little divot like this. And then take your fingers and smooth out those sides so it looks a little more even. Kind of pull those sides, smoothing out those seams, and then just wherever your pumpkin has some abrasions, you can tap it to make it look smoother. Take your potter's needle or your toothpick, and we're going to make lines and ridges around the sides. Start in the center, and we're going to hold our potter's needle steady and roll our pumpkin around the potter's needle. So we're not pulling through the clay, but we're just going to press, not pull. In figuring out what, how far you would like each of your lines of your pumpkin to be, I take usually about three potter's needles apart, or four, three or four, or two. It just depends on the style of pumpkin you're going for. And press those lines all the way around until you're happy with the end result. And if you don't like your lines, you can either smooth them out and start over, or you can squish your pumpkin entirely and start completely over. At the bottom, you can leave the lines like this if you're just gonna have it resting, or you can connect them together for more of a realistic or more completed look. It just depends on what you'd like to do. Once you have that, we're gonna take our stem color and we're gonna warm it up, and then we're gonna roll it into a ball between our fingers evenly, and then we're gonna start to roll our fingers back and forth to make a nice little snake. And we'll stop when it's about the size of this little indent, and then what I like to do is tap right here with the top of my thumb and then start kind of pressing a little bit further up on the snake and roll so it creates a little nub at the end like this. And then I set that in the pumpkin, take my silicone dowel tool and just ever so slightly press onto the side, press all the way around the pumpkin. And then once you've gone all the way around, I line up the silicone dowel tool with each of those former indents and I pull up the stem using my finger here on the back as support. Once I've gone all the way around, I either just pull it off if I kind of want a whimsical look or I cut it to be the height that I want it. You can stop there or you can add little leaves to your pumpkin. Here's just a simple, simple leaf. You can take a tiny piece of your clay and roll it into a ball between your fingers and then press it flat and kind of pull it off with your other fingers and take your fingers and make a little triangle, pinch the end of that circle and you can draw some lines to make a leaf. And you can also take your potter's needle and indent those lines ever so slightly. It's just a simple little leaf, but you can experiment with it more if you would like. You can set it on your pumpkin and you can also make your pumpkin on the vine. Another little thing you can do with your pumpkin is add warts. I like to add warts by taking just a tiny piece of clay, basically just pinching it off the warmed up clay, rolling it into a ball, 
and then setting it on the pumpkin, giving a little tap, rolling another one, a little bit smaller. The warts are of varying sizes, so just giving little taps, and sometimes you can make the warts different colors, or you could make them out of translucent clay, whatever you'd like. Or you can make little lines on your pumpkin by taking some clay and rolling it out super, super thin, like this, setting it inside those ridges, Usually I just do an approximate set and then I take my potter's needle and make sure that it goes in the rest of the way. Usually this is really nice with those yellow and green board type pumpkins. You can also make it kind of a speckled pumpkin by taking your potter's needle and doing a little flick of some warmed up clay of a different color and just ever so slightly tapping it onto your pumpkin and then tapping that clay in until it looks like it's blending in and you can make as many or as few of those as you would like. Those are the most common and techniques I use on my pumpkins. I hope you guys had fun and I hope you make lots of little pumpkins. Feel free to share some photos with me because I love seeing them and I might share them at the end of the next video if you would like. Have a great day guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.